Hello, my name is Ron Sledge with King Engine Bearing. I would like to present to you today the seminar titled Race Engine Bearing Lubrication, Clearances, and Tolerances. Our goal here at King is to help you produce engines with horsepower, great torque, and most importantly, durability. The engine has to be around at the end in order to win. Let's consider some bearing performance criteria. Oil viscosity of the oil. Oil type, synthetic versus mineral. Oil pressure and temperature that's going to be used in the engine. Uh, the proper clearances that we need to set the uh, bearings up with. Uh, proper surface finishes that should be obtained on our journal surfaces and then the bearing assembly tolerances of all the components around the bearing, the uh, connecting rod bore and main bores. But first, lubrication should be talked about. There are three types of lubrication. First we have boundary, which is a constant contact of the, any part of the bearing surface with the crankshaft journal. Intermittent or mixed lubrication is the next one. This is when there's uh, possible contact every now and then with the two surfaces, the crank and the, and the bearing. And then lastly, hydrodynamic lubrication. This is the most desirable uh, type of lubrication because this uh, phenomena is when the bearing is uh, never, almost never touches the, the shaft. Hydrodynamic friction though is should be talked about too because the hydrodynamic film produces a, fr uh, a, a friction uh, that produces heat. On the screen you'll see uh, an animation of the crankshaft turning inside a bearing with the oil being uh, forced through the oil clearance to uh, adequately float the crankshaft as the crankshaft begins to turn when we start up our engine oil pressure is building both from the oil, uh, the shaft rotation and also uh, pressure behind the oil pump that is in our engine that forces oil into that clearance space. Lubricating oil parameters. We've got to consider uh, the oil viscosity, the temperature, and the oil pressure. Viscosity is the resistance of a fluid to deformation under shear stress or just the resistance to flow. Uh, we commonly perceive this as thickness and shearing or movement causes internal friction of that fluid. The vis temperature that's involved is uh, viscosity decreases as the fluid's temperature increases and viscosity increases as the temperature decreases. And last, oil pressure, uh, it's the PSI loading that we pump oil into the main galleys and eventually into the bearing space. Factors that affect oil film. Oil starvation, just the bearing simply uh, running out of oil, not adequate, not uh, inadequate oil film thicknesses, uh, high loads, uh, insufficient bearing surface area, low rotation speeds, uh, insufficient oil viscosity, elevated temperatures, uh, roughness of their, our shaft surface finishes, and also oil contaminates uh, of the oil can also impede lubrication and cause oil starvation. And then ge geometrical distortions between mating components can also cause oil starvation. Over the past 15 years, Lubrication has trended uh, to this direction. Uh, my career has shown me that, that uh, these changes have happened uh, from going from big clearances to smaller clearances and also to the use of lower viscosity oils with tighter clearances. Um, the use of break-in lubricants to break in the mating surfaces of an engine to get the parts uh, worn in where they will um, uh, 
maintain an adequate oil film. And then lower oil pressures are preferred these days to help us increase oil uh, horsepower. The less drag we put on the oil pump, the more power we'll have at the end of the crankshaft. And then tighter bearing clearances and smaller journals. This is uh, one of the more um, um, things that have happened over the past few years to help engine builders produce more power is increasing the uh, or decreasing the journal size as well as the size of the the throws on the crankshaft which helps um, lessen the reciprocating weight and that that equates to higher horsepower to our engine so these are just ways that engine builders have found to uh, increase their power uh, and it's through the lubrication uh, of the engine. Uh, first, we need to pick the right oil that we're going to use, but we've got to consider these things. Uh, tighter clearances operate best with thinner oils. Uh, larger clearances require a heavier viscosity uh, at working temperatures. Match oil pressure with the viscosity of the oil used. Uh, engine temps uh, should also be matched with the right viscosity. Synthetic oils maintain a better shear strength than mineral. And then select an oil that is going to have uh, plenty of anti-friction wear additives to help fight friction uh, during the uh, operation of the engine. Oil viscosity. Uh, a question that's always asked is how much do do I need uh, for my particular engine for my particular oil clearance space uh, basically lower viscosity oils equal less friction because we have fewer molecules that are bouncing around against each other creating creating heat and then less friction then of course equates to lower operating temperatures uh, lower viscosity oils require a tighter bearing clearances to maintain pressure and also film strength. Oil pressures can be somewhat lower with this setup. And then again, synthetic oils generally provide stronger film strength because of their molecular structure. Uh, they're stronger than the mineral base. Our oil clearance is very vital to the survival of an engine bearing. We need to have just the right amount to match the oil, the temperature, and the RPM of the engine. Too much or too little is detrimental to the operation of the bearing. Bearing clearances should always be measured at 90 degrees to the parting line and must be matched with the oil viscosity generally should not be less than one and a half thousandths. Uh, bearing clearances should have an optimal value that is a combination of the temperature, the pressure, and the viscosity of the oil and the loading of the engine. Tiger clearances must be matched with a 4RA surface finish. To eliminate any mixed lubrication or, or boundary. Lower clearances result in a more uniform pressure distribution, provide greater oil film strength and also less peak loading. The less clearance built into the uh, uh, space between the shaft and the bearing is there's less uh, likeliness that there's going to be any peak, uh, high peak loads there. High clearances produce less uniform distribution of oil pressure. Uh, they produce high peak loads and also they produce noise and vibration in the engine. Okay, how much bearing clearance? How much is enough? What's just the right amount? Again, it's a function of the oil, the oil viscosity, the, the temperature of the engine, the shaft rotating speeds, and also the loads being produced by the engine. Uh, different high performance engines can operate with different bearing clearances. Um, a lot of times we just have, we have to go uh, by um, 
running an engine and, and kind, of, kind of like the trial and error method and to find out which one works the best, which combination. Uh, generally, long duration engines like circle track uh, operating at lower temps and oil pressures can utilize a lower clearance. Uh, for example, one and a half to two thousandths would be common. And then generally, short track duration uh, type engines, uh, short duration monster truck drag racing, operating at high temps and oil pressures, uh, need uh, extra clearance spaces for cooling. Uh, these ranges would be two to three and possibly maybe uh, could go over three a little bit. Uh, the oil needs to be cooled in this, in this case, so we need to get the oil through the bearing clearance. Uh, and, this, and the extra space helps the oil to go on through and get cooled back down. Okay, just sort of a, of a rule of thumb guideline on bearing clearance versus oil that I should use. Uh, 20, 50 oil, uh, anywhere from 2,000 or less would be uh, recommended. Uh, 30 weight maximum, uh, anywhere from 2.1 to 2.6, 2.0 to 2.5 in that range. The chart that's on the screen, you can see the uh, other breakdowns of the synthetics, uh, synthetic oils with the different weights. Uh, 40 weight would equal, would be uh, suitable for 2.6 to 3.0 or 2.5 to 3.0. And then 50 weight would be from uh, 3.1, 3.0, and above. You need the heavier weights with the bigger clearances and you need the thinner weights with the low clearances. And they must be matched as we've been saying to keep these uh, the just the right amount of space there to float that bearing or that shaft inside the bearing without it touching. 